solitary confinement in American prisons. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report, as we move to another issue around climate. A new study has found that war is associated with global climate. According to the report, there are links between the climate phenomenon El Niño and outbreaks of violence in countries from southern Sudan to Indonesia and Peru. In fact, the scientists find that El Niño, which brings hot and dry conditions to tropical nations, doubles the risk of civil war in up to 90 countries. The study was published online last week in the journal Nature. El Niño may help account for a fifth of conflicts worldwide during the past 50 years. We're joined by Solomon Siang, a lead author of the study Linking Civil Wars with Climate Change, postdoctoral researcher at the Woodrow Wilson School of Public International Affairs at Princeton University. Welcome to Democracy Now! Explain what you found in these last few minutes. So what we did is we looked at data since 1950, and we looked at how the global climate fluctuated between a cooler and wetter La Nina state and a higher and drier El Nino state. And what we found is that when the global climate was in the, the cooler and wetter La Nina state, the risk of conflict in the tropics was about 3 percent per year. So what that means is if you had 100 countries, you would expect about three of them to begin a new civil war in any given year. But when you move to the hotter and drier El Nino state, the risk of conflict rises to 6 percent, which is a doubling. And a little um, backing up, El Nino, explain exactly what it is. Sorry. So El Nino is a is a, a change in the global climate that originates in the Pacific Ocean. So under normal conditions, there's winds that push warm water across the Pacific Ocean and basically pile it up around Indonesia. But in some years, that wind pattern breaks down and that water sloshes all the way across the ocean, ac across the equatorial Pacific, and releases a tremendous amount of thermal energy into the atmosphere. And that creates an enormous wave that propagates through the atmosphere around the tropics, leading to warmer and drier conditions throughout most of the tropics and subtropics. Do you see the U.S. being impacted by El Nino in this way that you're describing? So actually, in our study, there, there are generally uh, observable impacts of El Nino in the United States. But in our study, uh, the impacts were not large enough to merit inclusion in the group of countries that uh, we denoted as being highly impacted by El Nino. So in the tropics, the effect of El Nino is actually much more dramatic than what we observe in the United States. What were you most surprised by in this study? So we were actually most startled by the magnitude of the effect. Uh, the, the idea that El Nino could affect one-fifth of conflicts around the, in, around the world uh, startled us, and it was completely unexpected. Give an example. So, you know, we have — it's very difficult to pin down a particular conflict as being related to El Nino. Uh, in general, I think the way to think about it is that the global climate is a contributing factor uh, to ongoing existing conflicts. But there are many countries in the sample uh, that look particularly conspicuous because they begin conflicts in El Nino years. Right. For example, Peru, uh, Sudan, Chad, Indonesia, Myanmar. These are all countries that have experienced conflicts that seem to be highly correlated with this process. Uh, we're going to link to your study at democracynow.org. Solomon Siang is our guest, the lead author of a study linking civil wars with global climate change, postdoctoral student at the Woodrow Wilson School of Public and International Affairs at Princeton University.